man, if I'm making a list, I either have a backlog I need to build or I run out of ideas. Uh, considering this is the start of a cluster, pro probably both. This is covering what I think are the five most impactful or potentially impactful cards from New Dawn Rises, the first set of Valhalla Cluster. I'm ignoring the starter decks for now since they're a separate product and focusing only on the booster set. Also, these are cards I either saw personally impact the meta or open the doors for decks that otherwise didn't have them. I know it's a bit weird considering the only decks really topping have been older ones that can take advantage of the fact that dual will sources are now mostly gone, but uh, screw it though, this is my list. Disgrace Knight is a 3 cost darkness resonator with an 8 7 body and the following effect. Pay 1 Darkness Will and remove 3 Darkness cards in your graveyard from the game. Put this card from the graveyard into your field. You can only activate this ability during your turn. Knight's stats are about average for its cost, but its effect is what really makes it an amazing card. Graveyard Recursion is nothing new for Force of Will, but cheap effects like this are rare to come by. Having to remove 3 cards sounds like a steep cost, but Darkness isn't losing too much from its repertoire from something like this. Most Darkness staples are low-cost removal or discard chant effects that have little use after casting them. Knight gives you an effective way to make use of those cards you can't recycle through other means. This card was also one of the most popular choices at Worlds for any Darkness deck, since it was almost always live, and provided a cheap way to slap a sizable body on board after your opponent would be running out of steam. Knight's applications are a bit more varied outside of Constructed. In New Frontiers, he makes for a cheap and easy way to play Sacrifice Outlets for Majin Subjugation, leading into potential turn 2 Beelzebubs. In Wanderer format, he also provides good synergy with Cubey, since he not only provides a similar sack outlet, but can also set up plays by removing Chimeras from the grave, the one place Petal can't summon them from. Shengong Bao is a 2 cost Fire Resonator with a 6 6 body and gains a 1 1 boost in swiftness if you control a beast. He reduces the cost of Heaven Thundering Strike by 1 Void Will. He also has two 1 cost Awakening abilities that let him search out either Black Spot Tiger and put it into your field, or Heaven Thundering Strike and add it to your hand. Both of these effects are cost efficient since Tiger is a 1 cost Resonator and the reduction he gives Strike is the same as the Awakening cost to search it. Tiger makes his boost and swiftness gain live, and Strike becomes an uncancelable 600 damage chant, both of which are decent gains. Gongbao plays nicely with Kirk since the Lizard Man's archetype already has several staple beasts to help fuel Gongbao without Tiger. In general, Gongbao is an aggro staple as he can easily fit into the two most aggressive colors without much issue. If we ever see a return of dual stones in New Frontiers format, I wouldn't say it's far fetched for a red green Hanzo, Chimimi, Farer, or Kirk to become one of the top decks again with Gongbao as a 4 of staple. <laughs> Magic Boomerang is a 1 cost wind chant that has 3 potential effects. When played, you can either deal 400 damage to a target resonator, give a resonator flying until the end of the turn, or return a resonator you control to its owner's hand. I'm a fan of cost efficient cards with options, and Magic Boomerang is possibly the best 1 cost chant for wins since True Blade of Spirits. 400 damage is enough to remove most other 1 cost threats from the field, and can even lead into killing off most 2 costs with cards like Sandstorm or Rapid Fire. This card provides a decent combo in elf decks with Tia since she can mark a resonator to be destroyed when it takes damage and you can then follow it up with Boomerang. Being able to give a resonator flying can lead to potentially damaging swings, something Feyre capitalized on in formats past with cards like Flying Cloud and Viola. The ability to bounce a resonator is a great form of protection and also a good way to reuse particularly strong enter abilities like those on Lorite, Mike, or Jubei. Overall, the offensive and defensive utility Boomerang provides makes it a strong choice in any win deck, which is why it ends up in my top 3. The number 2 spot goes to the first rune to make the list, Spear of the Valkyries. For 1 Light Will and 1 Void, you can deal damage to a J Resonator equal to the highest attack value of a Resonator you control. If you control a Valkyrie, you gain that much life. The cost of this card is increased by 2 Void when played from the rune deck. While Spear makes for a terrible rune due to its high cost in the rune deck, it makes for an excellent removal spell in your main board. The way the card is worded makes it hard to stop all of its effects from happening, and chances are you're going to get at least one of them off when you cast it. The way Spear is worded means that it selects the highest attack value of a resonator you control on resolution, so if your opponent tries to pop your biggest threat in response, it'll just go with the second highest after that. Your opponent trying to remove their own entity targeted by Spear also won't stop the life gain effect since it's not based on the damage dealt, but rather the number recorded when the first effect resolves. 
This card can be devastating with rulers like Tagris or Ayu who can easily get out large threatening bodies early on. It's a guaranteed life gain card in Brunhild since Spear states it only needs a Valkyrie and not a Valkyrie Resonator. While not entirely relevant in the current Wind Heavy meta, the difficulty in actually stopping Spear from resolving is what makes it one of the best cards in the set to me, and I feel that it has the potential to become a staple card in light depending on how the meta evolves over the next few sets. My top card from New Dawn Rises is Life Severing Blade, a 3 cost darkness chant that destroys a target resonator. It also has the effect to reduce its cost by 2 Void Will until the end of a turn if a resonator was sent from your field to the graveyard in that same turn. It feels like it would be a sin to not have a card with Severing in its name not take the number one spot. But Blade has more than its name to stand on when it comes to its placement. Instant speed resonator removal can be the difference between surviving a turn or hitting lethal, and having that power for one darkness far outpaces any other removal option the game has had thus far. Much like Spear, the wording on the card is important. It simply states that a resonator has to move from your field to the graveyard to activate its cost reduction, so you don't have to have an entity destroyed through battle or an effect. Pig, Mikkei, and other self-banishing resonators can all make Severing's reduction live whenever they want without interruption. Banishing is part of the effect's cost and not part of the resolution, so the card leaves the field before the effect can be responded to. This card's utility lives and dies by how popular resonator heavy or boss monster decks become. Severing can kill anything without barrier protection built in, of which only a few popular threats qualify for. There's not a single deck that can reliably run darkness that doesn't immediately benefit from using this card, and that's why it takes the number one spot. What are your top picks for the best cards in New Dawn Rises? Leave a comment below if you feel like sharing your opinion about the first set of New Valhalla Cluster.